Um, I like talking to uh, someone while I'm getting my hair cut because that's the one instance where I'm sitting down, I can't move, there's a mirror looking back right at me and I'm forced to talk to someone who I don't really know. And it kind of freaks me out every time because I realize all the little movements that I make that I just don't even know I'm doing. But more than that is the what's going on in my head when I hit those blocks. It's instant panic. You know, it's a uh, it's a p- 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 panic attack. Just like that. Usually I can say panic. Panic attack, panic attack, panic attack. But for some reason then, I couldn't move from the P to the A. And then I freak out. And something in my head just says, just push it out, push it out. And, you know, seconds turn into minutes. And, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, you just panic. You know? and, and, and that's what living with a stutter is. It's moving from one social situation to the next, afraid of that next attack. The trivialization begins by saying, well, I do that too. And that's why I tell my students, no, you don't. You do not stutter. You are disfluent, but you don't stutter because you'll never know what it's like to have something happen that you have no control over. Because when you are disfluent, you're in that moment. And you know this is a momentary thing, but it's not like a situation where you can't predict if it's going to happen again tomorrow. You can't predict if it's going to happen again in the next minute. And, you know, we'll never experience that. Children, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And the ups and downs can be significantly vast. Well, my name is Panaz, and I'm a, uh, a student at UT Austin studying speech pathology. Um, I'm also a person who stutters, and I, I, I run a support group for people and who stutter at the University of Texas. 500 people who stutter as well as speech-language Stuttering is insidious, and it, it's, it's because people can't see it. They don't know what's going on. It's not like they can look at a person and say, you know, I can understand why he can't jump very high. He's not very tall. Uh, I can understand why, you know, he walks that way. He has a... a a withered knee, but you can't physically see, see stuttering and people just don't have an explanation for it. And because of that, they assign their own rationalizations, their own explanations for why we stutter. Oh, I feel really good that there's so many people in the audience. Um, my name is Evan. Um, I am a librarian at, uh, here at UT at the Borobisco Center for American History. I'm originally from Rhode Island. Uh, one time recently, a year ago. I was waiting in line and I, and I should say, you know what, I want a nice coffee, I'm going to uh, order a freaking nice coffee. So I go up there and I go, uh, uh, she goes, what do you want? Uh, 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 ice coffee? What do you want? What do you want? And I, and I got really upset and I said give me a effing iced coffee and I shouldn't have done that you know because she doesn't know any better you know but it's episodes like that everyday situations you just want a cup of iced coffee because it's hot out but because of that nine times out of ten I'll just get a hot coffee because I can say give me a regular hot coffee But uh, I remember when I was in the eighth, eighth grade, this, this boy liked me. I was, I was told he, he liked me. 
and my my best girlfriend decided to, to, to take him over. And so, so she said, you know, she, she stutters. And I, I don't know whether he, he said he knew or not, but, but she, she took him away from me. And that was very hurtful of her, and, and it hurt me. This is our, our family picture made about two years ago. I have two boys and, and, and a girl. My, my father, used to stutter, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, uh, he, I don't, I don't know whether he just out, outgrew it or overcame it on his own. I kind of think he over, overcame it, I'm not sure how, but he, he was on, on, on my back all, all the time about my stuttering. And that, of course, made it a lot worse. And uh, so as, as a result, I, I, I was always af afraid of my, my father. I avoided him. And it, it, you would think that you would try to help your, your, your child be more sympathetic or an understanding or show more, more, more love or something, but he didn't. He was a handsome man, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a minister. It it wasn't until I was in my f my fifties that he he brought it up. I I just found out when I was in in my fifties that that he he used to st stutter. He never told me before. He he told me that he used to st stutter and he apologized for for passing that on to me and that he was so hard on me. So eventually, he came out with it, <laughs> but uh, it, it was hard in, in my growing up, extremely hard. Um, how about the lawyer in my... Cousin Vinny. Yeah. I would literally like walk out of the room uh, yeah. and hide for like and 10 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen of the of 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 the <clears throat> jury. Um, That's all there is to the character. Just making fun. And it's like one scene. He stutters. Ha ha ha. And he goes and sits down. That's it. Everything we talked about. Well, I get a little nervous. A little there. nervous. That is probably better. the most common misperception is that they stutter because they're nervous. And I think the reason why people think that is because people who don't stutter tend to be more disfluent uh, when they are nervous. No, you have to go, 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 go to the bub. Well, oh, that's uh, quite a stutter you've got there, Ken. So we just assume <laughs> Sorry, that. It doesn't bother me because of our ignorance about the nature of stuttering, that that must be why people who stutter also stutter. And I was in middle school, and I remember sitting in the theater, and everybody in the theater bursting out and laughing at the stuttering character. It's like, it was just like, rousing like mm -hmm. laughter all through the theater you know a theater of like 200 thing. people yeah mm -hmm. that was bad i remember that every c cartoon character from the 30s and 40s they all studied porky pig bugs bunny d d d daffy duck oh, yeah, daffy. Mm -hmm. but but what does that say about the culture the when Every cartoon character has that same impediment, you know? That kids are just raised to just laugh at, you know? And I don't mean to be heavy, I mean, and it's not like the cartoons kids watch are like that now, but, you know, I mean, it means something. I don't, I don't get any, any, any negative feedback nowadays. I'm, I'm head of, uh, of, of a bunco group and I'm on, on the phone all the time getting people to, to play 
Bunko. I, I did some of that this afternoon. As a matter of fact, I'll leave her a message. Uh, hi, Dolores. This is, is Joy Chandler. Uh, I'm calling to see if, if you might be interested in, 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 in playing Bunko. On and for some reason, I don't, I, I guess because I've, I've done it so much, I don't have a hard time with that, even pronouncing my, my name when I get on the phone. The phone has, has become a lot easier for me. She's scratching. <laughs> I think of so many children who have come through our doors who stutter, and I just want to say to them, I love the way you talk. I just love listening to your voice. I just, I think you are the best talker. You know, nobody wants to say that to them. Why? I mean, what is the big deal? They stutter. You know, that doesn't mean anything about what they can communicate. And I think we have to set that example with them at a young age to everybody around them. Because if they think you really think that, they will think that too. And that, are, that's why children are just amazing. I mean, they really do believe in you. They believe in you in a way that once you reach adulthood is just really hard to access that. So we have an opportunity with these young ch children to help them to feel better about themselves and to know that stuttering is not going to define them. You know, it just isn't. They might stutter. They might, you know, do other things, but it doesn't make a difference in terms of what they can achieve or what they can do. So who stutters? This is one of the reasons why I love stuttering. That is because I can work with preschoolers. I can work with school age kids. Stuttering has afflicted mankind since the beginning, and I think we're finally getting to a, a, a point of bringing understanding of this condition to the public, and I think that's great news for people who stutter. I just want people to know it when they see it or just know it when they hear it and I think on a whole society or at least here in the US people in general are getting better at that you know they they, they probably don't understand it they, they probably will never understand it because it's a tough thing to understand but just not be weirded out by it and I just think that, that people ought, ought to be uh, patient with, with stutters and let them, let them talk when they, they want to.